everyone, it's Christine and welcome back to Paranormal TV. It has been a while so this is going to be my update and I'm not going to waste a whole lot of time. This is just for my subscribers who've been here for a while. If you're new this may be a little bit confusing. You're like, why are you updating us? I've just been gone since before Halloween. So I've had a lot going on and I wanted to tell you guys what it was. Seriously, I think I just abandoned you because I've gotten a lot of messages surprisingly because I'm a smaller channel. And I got a lot of messages from my subscribers asking me, like, am I okay? They were worried. Where have I been? And I was just so touched by that. Please stop licking. My dog is licking her paws. Um, I was so touched by that, guys. It was so sweet. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. I, Lacey, thank you. I have been really ill. I have an autoimmune disease and that was kind of at play. It made things a lot more complicated. <laughs> You're so cute, Lacey. It made things a lot more complicated and it made everything just a little bit harder, but my main culprit was my gallbladder. So when I originally just kind of stopped making videos, it was because I had chronic bronchitis. Um, I, had, I have chronic bronchitis. It's very very loud <laughs> to say the least it's very obnoxious it's I get very ill from it I get every year sometimes I get it because I had a cold sometimes I get it because I had too many asthma attacks <laughs> sorry guys I'm sick I'm trying to do this all in one shot because I am having some technical difficulties so if I sniffle if I cough I'm sorry um so I was gone for a little bit because of that and I was getting better I was not contagious because it's not contagious chronic bronchitis, but um, I was getting better and I was able to go to the investigation that I had bought tickets for in Gettysburg and I did that and I came home and I was excited to, can you not do that Lacey? I was excited, Lacey! I was excited to edit the video and get a Halloween special out for you guys but on Halloween it was that time of the month and I felt really sick and I thought that maybe I was getting the flu and um, the next day I was puking my guts up so I was like yep got the flu wonderful and that went on for about a week before I went to the hospital for dehydration and I found out that it was not the flu it was actually my gallbladder so my bilirubin was elevated and they admitted me to the hospital because I needed a bunch of tests done to see if I needed it out now if it was needing to come out right away or if I had some wiggle room to get it out because my platelets were on the lower side and um I what am I talking about right now Christine yes the first time they um they thought I had passed a gallstone because all of my symptoms subsided and my bilirubin went down and they sent me home my platelets continued to decline and I was back in the hospital maybe a week later so <laughs> or two weeks something like that I don't even know so I went back to the hospital and this time I was really itchy from the Billy Rubin and they told me this could last a little while. So I was really itchy from the Billy Rubin. I was itching and I was I had a lot of bruises and petechiae which I contribute from the itching. And um, the day that I went to the hospital I felt extremely weak. I, I had this rush of exhaustion come over me and I was like, okay, if I'm gonna lay down for five minutes and if I don't feel better in five minutes, I need to go. My heart was pounding and I just I could not get to the point where I felt okay so I had tapped my husband I was like I need to go to the hospital and I was trying to be like low-key quiet about it because his family was all around me and I didn't want to worry them but they all heard they were all worried he rushed me to the hospital um, I told them you know I felt really really weak and as I was sitting there I had more bruises more petechiae popping up and it got to the point where I was literally covered in them all over my chest my breast my stomach the bottoms of my feet my legs I mean I had a couple hundred bruises and 
so much petechiae all over my body. I contemplated taking pictures because I knew I was going to update you guys. I was like, maybe I should show them what it looked like so they know the severity of it. But it was so severe that I decided not to because I didn't know how comfortable you guys would be with seeing those pictures. I mean, it was that bad. So I didn't take the pictures, but take my word for it, it was terrible. It was so bad. I mean, all the doctors were amazed by it and all the nurses were amazed by it and they all commented on it when they came in the room. So I found out my platelet count was four in the ER. And I had a really great nurse. I cannot remember his name. I feel like it was Jeff or John or something like that. He was really awesome. Um, however, um, the doctor came in and they're like, well, we're going to transfer you because we don't know what to do for you if you hemorrhage here. I'm like, my holy count's four. You need to not transfer me, but whatever. I just need to get to a hospital where they know what they're doing. So they were contemplating transferring me until a hematologist talked to him and told him uh, that could be deadly for me to be transferred. They were going to transfer me really, really far. I'm talking about a 40 minute drive too. So the hematologist told him absolutely not. We will bring a treatment to you. So they transported treatments to them. They transported IVIG for me. They also gave me a really high dose of steroids through my IV in the ER and then they brought me upstairs and I sent my husband home because I knew I was going to have a reaction with the IVIG. I didn't know how bad the reaction would be but I always have a reaction. So I sent him home and I told him I just wanted him to get some sleep because I didn't want him to be up all night driving. Which was true but I also didn't want him to see a reaction. My mom was there with me. So they gave me the IVIG and I think they did it wrong. They did do it wrong. I know they did it wrong. So I think that is what contribute to the worst reaction I have ever had in my entire life that followed. So um, IVIG is intravenous immune globin. I always have a reaction. However, they're kind of mild. It's like flu-like symptoms. You know, I feel nauseous. You may puke once or twice. Nothing too bad. Your body may ache. You may get a low-grade fever. But however, whew, um, they gave me the IVIG. It's supposed to be given alone. They gave it to me with fluids and they also did not calculate my weight with the IVIG, which you're supposed to do. So they did that wrong and my reaction was really bad. I was in a ton of pain. My whole body hurt and my head especially was pounding. It felt like somebody had took a very heavy brick and just busted it over my head. It hurt so bad. And my whole body was trembling. I mean, like this, but my entire body. And I couldn't stop shaking. And it was violent. So the nurse came in. I called her and I told her, like, I can't stop shaking. And she stopped IVIG. She gave me Decadron, another high dose, which is a steroid. It's a steroid I got downstairs. This was to counteract the infusion, which I knew that's what they were going to do. I've had this process done before with a less severe reaction. So, um, I was still shaking and I couldn't stop. So they gave me morphine for that. And then that was the first time I ever had morphine and I was scared <laughs> and I had no reaction to it. So that was good. But then they gave me, um, Tylenol for my pain because my headache, because the morphine doesn't help with headaches. It helps with pain everywhere else, but not the head apparently. So, um, it took me maybe five hours before my reaction fully stopped and I was able to get the IVIG again and I finished the IVIG they gave me more steroids lots and lots of steroids I had while I was in this hospital stay and um I had a slow rise with my platelets I needed an ERCP because they found out that I had obstruction in my bile duct and um I needed that cleared out so what they were going to do was go down with the scope cut the bile duct and clear it all out now this was risky with my platelet count being so low so I had to raise it to at least 50 and I finally got it to over 50 and I was so excited it took like days for it to happen and I called my mom like they're gonna do the ERCP they had told me they were gonna do the ERCP and they had me like I couldn't eat, I couldn't drink, so I'm all excited, I'm gonna get it done, and I'm gonna feel better. No, they lied. They lied. 
they, the hematologist gave him the green light, said, you're good to go. This is a procedure that doesn't need that high of a platelet count. She's good to go with, I think it was like my 60 platelet count. Good to go. But they wouldn't do it. And I was so mad because they had told me they were going to. They got my hopes up. And um, I was extremely itchy from my bilirubin. It was torture. So they gave me a strong dose of Benadryl so strong it made me high very very high I could barely move I could barely talk um I hate that feeling by the way so finally my platelet count went over a hundred and they did the ERCP and I was told you know you could get pancreatitis you could get this this and this but it's very low risk and it basically it depends on your body it depends on the way your body is shaped inside which nobody can see until they're down there so I felt comfortable with getting the ERCP done and I needed it done so I didn't care um, they did it I went home that day they were supposed to monitor me they didn't they sent me home but whatever it was the day before Thanksgiving so I was so happy to go home um, I was home for about a week and a half before I had another gallbladder attack. They told me when I got my ERCP done I would not have another gallbladder attack to get it out when I was in remission. So I went by that. Um, one of the doctors had told me this and I was like, felt pretty comfortable with this. So I went back to the hospital because I had the most pain I ever had in my entire life. And I've had moments of extreme pain before but not like this. This was the worst pain. The scale of 1 to 10, it was higher than a 10. I couldn't stand straight. I could barely walk. I could barely breathe. I had really bad pain here that went right through to my back, my shoulders, my stomach. Um, even my chest up here was hurting. It was so bad. So um, I went back to Taylor Hospital and um, a lot of the people in Taylor Hospital are very good. There's one doctor in particular that's terrible. His name is Dr. Patrick Elliott, the worst doctor I've ever encountered. He's the one who kept sending me home instead of having my gallbladder removed or instead of referring me to have my gallbladder removed. He would not speak to me. He would barely, he would come in just like, we're not going to do it and then leave. And I could never get a question out. He would leave so quickly. Um, and he would just, he just wouldn't speak to me. He would avoid me. And it was because he was afraid to remove my gallbladder with the fact that I had Evans syndrome. So, um, I went in for a third time and I told him I had a gallbladder attack. I did. Um, they gave me Dilaudid, which was a terrible drug. It made me feel like a zombie. I could barely move. And when I would move, I would puke. Um, so I had asked them, please take me off Dilaudid. Please give me morphine. I don't care if it's less strong than the Dilaudid. I'd rather be in a little bit of pain and not throw up and be able to move around then be in no pain and cannot move and just feel like I'm glued to my bed and puke my guts off. So they took me off the dilata, they gave me morphine, they gave me lots of tests, um, waited for Dr. Elliot to come and talk to me, talked to me briefly and said he would be back after he found out my test results. He never came back, ever. And that was really frustrating because I needed this removed. I had a fever of 103.7. I was, I had an infection in my body. I needed the gallbladder out. And he never came back. And I told my mom, like, I was crying. It's like, he's not going to come back. And I'm not going to have the gallbladder removed. I just can tell. So my mom forced him to talk to her. And he said that I could wait six weeks to have my gallbladder removed with 103.7 fever. I could wait six weeks. Okay. Um, so then another doctor came in. And she was my saving grace. <laughs> I love this doctor. She had me transferred. She pulled some strength. She transferred me to Jefferson that night. She was amazing. She told me to report Dr. Elliot for avoiding me and for trying to send me home when I needed my gallbladder removed. That there was no way he would be able to do the surgery with my Evans syndrome and that's why he was just going to send me home but that was not right because I needed it removed and he was not putting my interest ahead. So I went to Jefferson and they um, took my gallbladder out the next day and 
I found out I had gallstone pancreatitis, which I believe I got from the ERCP, but I do not believe that it was the doctor who gave me the ERCP's fault. I think it was just my body, what happened with my body. I don't think it was his fault at all. He was a very good doctor. He explained the risks and he explained why you could get pancreatitis. And I'm not going to do it here because I will run out of time talking to you guys, but yeah, it was probably just my body. So I had gallstone pancreatitis. The surgery took four hours because my gallbladder was stuck inside of me. They could not get it out. And it took them four hours to get almost the entire gallbladder out. I have about this much of my gallbladder left and my gallbladder was gangrene. And unfortunately, that little bit of gallbladder that they left in there was not gangrene. So I'm good with that part of my gallbladder still being in there. But um, it was gangrene. I had a golf ball sized gallstone right here in my bile duct. So I did have a gallbladder attack after the ERCP, a gallstone did get blocked. I don't know why they told me I wasn't going to have one again, but I did. They lied to me. Um, so I had that done. They put me on, oh, I had another IVIG infusion in the hospital before I got my gallbladder removed because my platelets were too low to have my gallbladder removed. They were in their 40s and they needed to be 50 or higher. So they did that so they could remove it. They um, removed it and kept me for two days. They gave me um, nausea medicine and all that, all the pain medicine I needed. Um, I was in a lot of pain because I had a drain inside and the drain hurt way more than the surgery incisions did. The drain was like this big. Um, went up to like my rib area. It hurt very bad. Um, it was so good when they finally removed it. Two weeks later, they were able to fully remove it. I went and recovered at my mom's house. My mom and my little brother helped me out a ton. Um, you know, my husband stayed with me too. So when he wasn't working, he was very helpful. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, I'm sick. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, I'm sick right now and I'm having some tech issues, but once that's figured out and once I feel a little bit better I'll be back like I was before uploading very frequently I've missed you guys so much I'm trying to think if I forgot anything I don't know if I did oh I forgot a lot of things so my platelets are doing pretty good actually right now knock on wood um I have two new diagnoses I have hemophilia so that's very rare for a girl to have, but my great grandfather had it and I have it. And um, I have hypogamma global anemia. I don't even know if I said that right, but I do not make enough antibodies, which is why I'm always sick. So I also have an iron deficiency and my hemoglobin is low. So my anemia is acting up. I'm taking iron, um, my vitamin D, I need to take that again because my vitamin D is low. So I need to like get on that. but. Yeah, so those are my issues. I changed my diet. I have a high protein diet and I do think that is helping with my platelets. So my diet is very high protein. I eat protein every day and I try to eat it multiple times a day. I do have high cholesterol, so I manage that as well. I count my cholesterol. So um, that's been doing pretty good because I've been very much on top of my cholesterol because my mom, it runs my family. My mom had open heart surgery and my grandfather had a lot of heart attacks. <coughs> Guys, as you can see, I'm not doing, I don't feel too great. I'm coughing a lot. So I'm going to go. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys for sticking around and being patient. Thank you guys so much for caring. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.